So, stages. It's something we can never really seem to agree on. As with any new Smash game, the stage debate is as hot as ever, and there is still a lot of talk over what stages we should play on. Do we want one platform, two platforms, three platforms, four platforms, no platforms? Janky stage with platforms. It's just basically a lot of platforms. But there are always those stages we all unanimously agree should always be banned. But why is that exactly? To someone who is not in loop when it comes to the competitive side of Smash, they might be curious as to why we play on such a small variety of stages. And that's what we're going to be exploring here today. I'll be looking at every single stage in Smash Ultimate and try to explain why we don't play on it in a competitive environment. But before we begin, I just want to explain some of the biggest reasons for why we ban stages. Number 1. Hazards. In a competitive environment, random factors such as stage hazards is something we try to avoid. Sure, you can memorize and know how the hazards of a stage work, but often the hazards are too volatile and give way too big of an advantage to whoever gets to capitalize on them. But you can turn stage hazards off in Smash Ultimate, I hear you say. And that is indeed correct, but what Ultimate considers hazards and what the community considers hazards varies quite a bit. This does make most stages a lot more playable, but they still have a lot of other issues that make them non-optimal for competitive play, which we'll get into later. Number 2. Walls and Ceilings Walls and ceilings cause a lot of problems. For one, they can let you live for a very long time through teching. There's also a lot of shenanigans and even some really broken combos that you get access to when walls are present. Having your back to the wall or a ceiling over your head basically means you can't get KO'd in that direction, given that you know what you're doing, which most competitive players do. Number 3. Camping Potential When playing competitively, we use a time limit, even though we play stock battles. This is to ensure that the battle eventually comes to an end, which is mostly just to make sure that tournaments run smoothly and we don't have to wait forever. However, this also means that timing someone out is a viable win condition. This brings a lot of issue when it comes to stages, because some stages are great for camping. In some of these cases, you can just pick a character with good mobility, get the lead and run away until the timer runs out. And that's not really fun for anyone, which is why it's important that we only have stages where this is not possible. Those are the three biggest reasons why stages get banned, but there are obviously some exceptions with different reasons. I'll be doing my best to explain those as they come up. So let's get into the stage list itself. I'll be assuming that hazards are turned off, because with hazards on there are even fewer legal stages. Also, keep in mind that this is just my opinion, but I will try to argue in a mostly objective way. In any case, sit back and enjoy yourself as we take a look at every single stage in Smash Ultimate. Battlefield Battlefield is a very good stage. It's symmetrical, giving no edge to any player's starting position. The stage has platforms, which gives some layout variety and allows for different types of neutral advantage or disadvantage play. There is a reason why this stage has always been legal, and is always a starter stage in basically all tournaments for any Smash game ever. It's a great and balanced stage. There isn't a lot to say about it since it's just a solid stage. It'll probably stay legal for as long as Smash will exist. Big Battlefield Okay, so Battlefield is all well and good, but what if you took Battlefield and just scaled it up a bit? That should be fine too, right? Well... no. For one, the stage is just too huge. The blast zones are way too big, making stocks last for too long. Now, blast zone size is also one of the determining factors in what makes a stage legal. Granted, it's not as important as the other three factors, but it is certainly a contributor. There's also just too much space around these platforms. You can certainly just camp the platforms against characters that have bad range or movement. Also, we have normal battlefield, which is just better. Final Destination What can I say about Final Destination? It's flat and well-sized. It doesn't have any platforms, but not every stage needs to. There's pretty much nothing going on here, which is a good thing. It's about as simple as stages come. The stage has been around since Melee and is probably one of the most iconic stages in all of Smash. It's simple, but great nonetheless. There's no stage I would rather play no items Fox only on than Final Destination. Peach's Castle This stage might not look so bad at first, and it is not really that bad, but it does have some aspects that make it less than suitable for competitive play. There are some walls here. Granted, they're not really that much in the way, but they're still there. There's also these triangles, which can make for some good jankiness, but the main problem are the ledges. When on the ledge, depending on the stage, you can either be in a very advantageous position, or a very disadvantageous one. Ledges generally create a lot of problems, and is something that we need to take into account. In this case, the wall makes the position on stage even stronger, and the one on the ledge has very limited options, even more so than they do on other stages. Which is mostly why it is banned. Congo Jungle this is yet another stage that might not look so bad, and in reality is not really that bad either. The stage has slants, which is a pretty interesting topic. There are some other legal stages at the moment which have slants, 
Obviously, the degree and the direction of the slant is very important. There are stages with slants that are basically walls because of how steep they are, while some others are tamer. Personally, I'm not a big fan of slants in Competitive Smash, and it is generally something that tends to be avoided when finding legal stages, but for reasons I'll get into later, some stages with slants are currently legal. Now with that said, slants are not nearly as bad as walls and ceilings, but still something we try to avoid when possible. Now as for this stage itself, the platforms are very tall, and to reach them you'll need to use two jumps for most characters which does lead to it being a prime camping position. In a lot of these cases, it's not that the stage is inherently unplayable, but we just have better alternatives without the bad aspects of the stage. Hyrule Castle! This stage is just too huge, and make you live for way too long. The left side has a massive slant, which is not optimal. The right side, however, is the biggest offender here. There's both a ceiling and a wall here, and it just makes for a lot of pit fighting. You also can't really see what is happening most of the time when fighting here, which is really not fun. Aside from that, the layout is not terrible, but the points from earlier make it pretty bad. Super Happy Tree! Yet another stage that is just too big. I guess this is a good time to elaborate on the topic of ledges. When talking about stages with ledges and slants, you really have to assess them on a case-by-case -case basis. Some stages are not nearly as bad as others, but generally speaking, ledges can cause a lot of problems, mainly if there are more or less than two of them. Their positioning is also important. If there are more or less than two, it will most likely make one side of the stage better than the other. I guess in that sense this stage does fulfill that requirement, only having two. And had it been just this middle section, it might even have been considered for the potential counterbreak stage. Well, had it not been for the heavily slanted ground. But the big problem is the clouds on the sides, which make for excellent camping positions. These clouds for some reason don't have ledges making them very difficult to get onto if there's another person guarding it. Yes, now I suddenly want more ledges, I just can't seem to make up my mind. Though it's not like this stage would be fine even with the ledges, seeing how this stage is still way too close to the blast zone. Dreamland! Dreamland is pretty much just Battlefield with slightly different platforms and a different stage bottom. That's basically it. Obviously this stage is perfectly fine for competitive play, but either it will be lumped together with Battlefield as one stage ban, or we'll just not bother with it at all since they're too similar. Saffron City! There are too many pieces of unconnected land here, that as well as there being tons of walls all over the place. This is perhaps a better example of there being too many ledges. I mean, it's obviously better that there are ledges than otherwise, but it's still far less than optimal to have this many. If you can place yourself in a position where your opponent has to approach you, and either has to jump and try to land next to you, or grab the ledge, then you're already in an advantageous position, which again is something we try to avoid. Mushroom Kingdom! Alright, finally I get to talk about walk-offs. Walk-offs are a big no-no when it comes to competitive Smash. For those who are unaware, walk-off is a term for stages where the ground reaches all the way into the side blast zones. They allow for some seriously cheesy kills. If these stages were to be legal, you'd see a ton of waiting on the sides for one player to make a mistake, and then the other player dies for it almost regardless of the percent. There are a lot of combos that might not kill, but are able to carry opponents to the edge of a stage but when there is no edge, they just kind of die. It also in most cases entirely invalidates the recovery process, giving characters with bad recoveries a huge edge. There are also ceilings and walls here, so it's pretty obvious why this stage is banned. It's basically going to be the same story when it comes to any stage with walk-offs. Princess Peach's Castle! Wait, didn't we already do this stage? Oh sorry, my bad, that was Peach's Castle. This is Princess Peach's Castle. I guess she built this one before becoming a princess, which I kind of thought was a birth title, but I'm getting sidetracked here. The big wall section in the middle here is where most of the problems with this cave come from, and that's mainly it. Walls aren't fun, man. Rainbow Cruise! Again, we have a wall here, and some pesky slants. Aside from that, the platforms are fine, but the wall is what kills the stage. Congo Falls! This stage could actually have been a pretty good counterpick stage, had it not been for the rock on the right side. It's kind of the same issue with Saffron City, except here it's even more amplified. If you decide to camp on the rock, the player there can cover basically every getup option besides jump which doesn't exactly get you onto the rock in the first place. The rock is also really close to the blast zone, so yeah, the rock ruins this stage. Jungle Japes! Okay, so the part here in the middle is fine. It looks kind of identical to Hazardless Smashville, though the two side platforms are a different story. Nobody should ever be able to retreat and end up in a more advantageous position than before, unless it's melee we're talking about. Point is that you can force your opponent to have to approach you on a platform with ledges, and these platforms can be accessed just by running away. That's not exactly a very good stage. There is of course also the rapids running under the stage, which is just a big no for me. Great Bay! 
Water is just not a great thing in general. I would personally classify water as an hazard, but I guess a lot of these stages would not really work without the water. The turtle on the right side here doesn't really help either. Lots of strange lands and ceilings. You can also kind of camp under the turtle, and there's also a way you can make it so you don't drown just by staying under there, meaning you can stay under there for as long as you'd like, which can make it really hard for some characters to hit you. And you really don't want to fight in this tiny area, trust me. Temple! A classic for sure, but yeah. It probably does not come as a surprise when I tell you that this stage is too big. Like, way too big. It has almost every sign of a banned stage. Walls and ceilings, platforms with ledges that are hard to approach. Oh, and of course, the section down here makes you live basically forever. But the biggest reason it's banned is because of circle camping. On this stage, you can just pick a fast character, get the percent lead, and run away in a circle around the stage. And there is very little your opponent can do to stop you. It's not really fun for anyone, which is why stages like these are banned. Brinstar. This stage is pretty alright. With Hazards off, the stage does not change at all, so it just ends up being a weirdly slanted stage with some platforms thrown in randomly. The ground is also not solid, which means you can do some pretty effective sharking on this stage. Either way, I don't really think this stage is the worst. I still don't really like slants, but they're not super bad in this case. So the stage is fine in my opinion, but not really something I would like to see in a tournament setting. Yoshi's Island! Melee. This stage gets a big nope from me. Strange wall that is also a slant? Can't say I like it. Random ceiling block that covers like half the stage? Not a fan. Top that off with walk off to the side with another wall ledge slant thing, and you have yourselves a very janky stage. Yoshi's Story! This stage is yet another Battlefield clone. Sure, it's a little unique with the platforms being arranged a little differently, and the ground having some slants, but honestly it's really not different enough to the point where I would say it is anything but a battlefield clone. The slants are honestly purely a bad thing, but they're not too much in the way. But if we're going to ban Dreamland for being too similar to Battlefield, then I really can't see much justification for why this state should be legal. Fountain of Dreams. Again, yet another state that is basically just Battlefield. Though the biggest difference here is that the stage can't even hold a consistent frame rate, which is really important in a competitive fighting game. Even if they patch this frame rate issue in the future, it's still just another battlefield with slightly different blast zones. Green Greens. The two side parts of the stage are very close to the blast zones. There's also a bit too many ledges on this stage. Aside from that, the stage is honestly not that bad. I like the mid platforms and how the other sides feel in gameplay, but again, too many ledges is generally a bad thing, which is why it's banned. Corneria! Yeah, this one is pretty bad. I mean, I like playing on it casually, but competitively it's a bit of a disaster. The mid part of the stage is fine, I guess, though the right side is just a massive camp fest. Not only are you really close to the blast zone, but there is a massive arcing wall over you. But that's not even the worst part of it. There's also this spot on the guns where you can now stand indefinitely since the hazards are off, which let's just say makes for some janky gameplay. It's not strange why this one is banned. Venom! There is like walls everywhere on this stage. The wall in the middle makes it very hard to approach since you actually have to jump to get over it. Every surface on this stage is slanted which makes the entire stage weird to play on. You can project all camps super easily against slower characters. Look, do anyone even enjoy playing on this stage casually? In any case, it's not legal and that's a good thing. Pokemon Stadium. My personal favorite out of the two Pokemon stadiums. They are both almost identical with only some minor blast zone and understage differences. So I'll just talk about both here. I just like the way this one looks better, but from what it looks like, it seems that Pokemon Stadium 2 is the one we are using in the future. Oh well. This stage is apparently so great that they even play with it in Melee, where hazards are on, which is not really great, but whatever, that's Melee. In Ultimate we have hazards off, which makes this an excellent stage. It's simple with two platforms that are spaced out nicely. It's a great stage that is probably going to be a starter for as long as Smash exists. On it! No. Walk-offs, walls all over the place, tons of random platforms. This area over here is just a prime spot for camping. You have a platform over your head and a wall to your back. They can only approach you from the front. And not to mention, the spots where you can camp are so close to the blast zones. Which is just a recipe for disaster. Mushroom Kingdom 2! This stage has it all! Walk-offs, walls... Actually, never mind, that's about it. But that is more than enough for me. This stage is really small, and that combined with walk-offs makes for a lot of cheesy and early kill situations. Brinstar Depths. Everything you would expect from the unplayable stages here. So I'll just talk about the parts that make it unique. This stupid platform down here. It has a ledge that doesn't even work properly. Like, you can't do anything else except ledge jump from it. And the platform itself is just so low from the rest of the stage, making for an excellent fighting pit. 
which won't last that long since it's so close to Blast Zone. It's kind of fun with hazards on casually, but competitively it would not be great. Big Blue. This stage is kind of weird. The floor will drag you towards the left side of the stage. It isn't that punishing, and you can just jump to avoid getting dragged. Aside from that, the ground tilts along with the stage, which gets a little weird sometimes. But seeing how everyone loves Lilat so much, I guess that wouldn't really be a problem after all. The stage is fun and all, but not something for competitive events. Four side. This stage has the same problems as Saffron City. Too many walls because of the buildings and having wall pits that make for a lot of jankiness. The UFO is removed in Hazardless, so at least that's good, but it's still a very unplayable stage. Delfino Plaza. Ah yes, good old Delfino Plaza. Somehow this stage has actually been legal in many tournaments in the past. The stage is pretty wild all things considered. When it's just the platforms it's honestly fine. Almost all of the different platform layouts could be considered legal in their own right. Although the ground not being solid would allow for some sharking which could cause problems. Though sadly between these platform segments there are a lot of walk-offs and even some water sections, which rules it pretty much out of the question. Mushroomy Kingdom. Okay, so you know how walk-offs are pretty much an instant ban. Well, how about walk-offs that move? Yeah, I'm not even sure if people enjoy playing on this stage casually. The stage also has a ton of solid walls and blocks, which is just lovely. The stage is a mess from a competitive standpoint, so let's just move on. Figure 8 Circuit. Pretty standard stage. It has walk-offs, so it's pretty much out of the question. Aside from that, it is a rather uninteresting map. WarioWare. Oh boy, it's time to talk about WarioWare. Back when the game was just released, there was a lot of debate of whether or not this stage should be legal. And well, the stage itself is fine. The layout is quite unique and is very different from a lot of other legal stages. However, the blast zones are not. The stage has really slim blast zones on the left and right side of the stage. You can die at stupidly early percents from minor mistakes because of the blast zones. Especially in a game with rage, I really don't think blast zones of this size should be a thing. It's a little too crazy for my taste. But I understand why people want to play on it, even if I really disagree with it being legal. Oh, and also, since we're on the subject, saying WarioWare should be legal, because if you don't like it, you can just ban it. It's not an argument. You can say the same thing about any stage you think should be legal. Like I can say, I think pirate ships should be legal, because if you don't like it, you can just ban it. Believe it or not, I've seen a lot of people make this argument for why some stages should be legal. So please don't do that. Anyways, enough of that. There are stages yet to be talked about. Bridge of Elden. I actually really like this stage casually. It's simple and clean, and there's not a ton of stuff to get in the way. Though sadly it has walk off, so for competitive it's a no-no. Not much more to say here, honestly. Norfair. There is five platforms in a strange shape here, but again there is a lot of ledges all over the place. They're very easy to camp on seeing how some of them can't be pressured from below, which is just Norfair. Okay, this stage sucks, moving on. Frigate Orpheon. Frigate Orpheon. Orpheon? Orpheon? <laughs> I don't know, one of those probably. This stage is pretty alright, all things considered. The only thing that keeps it from being great is the platforms on the side which move despite hazards being off. When it goes down, not only does it count as a wall, but it can also make it hard to get back up against projectile characters. I would not be entirely opposed to this stage being legal, but I won't lose sleep over it being banned. Yoshi's Island. Oh, Yoshi's Island, we hardly knew ye. Well, honestly, I really don't miss it that much. It's really not the worst thing ever, but the main issue here is really just the fact that it was very slanted, both on the ledges and on the center of the stage. On the other hand, we do still have stages like Lilat, with notable slants, so... I don't know. I don't really mind less slants in the game. Halberd! This stage has quite the history. It used to be legal during different parts of Brawl and Smash 4, and, well, it was never a fan favorite. The ceiling was extremely low during the transition part, and the hazards were quite annoying and caused some weird interactions. In Ultimate, the hazards are removed, but the stage itself is not quite optimal. The ceiling seems to be fixed, but it still has walk-offs during the beginning, and the platform part still allows for sharking from beneath. It's not a bad stage overall though, but I get why people don't really want to play on it. Lilat Cruise. Okay. I guess it's time to talk about Lilat Cruise. Look. This stage is fine from a layout perspective. The platforms are at least a little different than the usual triplats. And aside from that, it does seem like most of the janky ledges have been fixed from Smash 4. 
at least for the most part. But that's as far as my compliments go. I really do not like this stage. For one, it does have slants, which is never a great thing. Look, slants are just janky in general, and I'm really not a fan of them in competitive play. I feel like when an aspect of a stage starts to change how the gameplay fundamentally works, that is when it really should not be a legal stage. To take an example, a lot of the time jab locks just don't work on slants. The whole interaction is completely changed, and that is just one example. There are lots of moves that change in small ways when they're used on a slant. There's really no other aspect of any other stage that do something like this. The closest thing being platforms, but they are at least consistent with how the ground works. Aside from all of that, at least the tilting is gone when playing on Hazardless. And for the most part, people don't seem to be falling through the stage like they did in Smash 4. Though overall, I really don't think it is quite different enough to warrant being its own stage. The other things that make it unique, like these slants, are not exactly things I'm particularly fond of in the first place. The platform layout being a little different is not really enough to justify it in my opinion. But I know a lot of people like this stage, and while I'm not a huge fan of it overall, I can at least stomach it being a counterpick. Though I really do not believe it should be a starter stage. Pokemon Stadium 2. It's basically the same as Pokemon Stadium 1, with some very minor differences. I like Stadium 1 better though. Port Town Aerodive. I guess this stage didn't understand that Hazards Off meant that Hazards had to actually go away. Because this stage is not changed at all. It still has the Hazards that deal a lot of damage. A lot of the transformations are very strange, and some have walls. Look, this stage is not legal for a reason, let's just leave it at that. Castle Siege! I don't quite get how this Hazards Off function works, since this stage does not transform while others do. In any case, the stage is mostly fine, though the main issue aside from the slant is that the stage is really small, and the height difference can allow for some cheesy strats with some characters like Palutena and her side B. Not having a lot of space can be really volatile depending on the characters. All around, the stage is just a little too spicy for a competitive setting, at least in my opinion. Distant Planet. The left side of the stage has a walk-off, and the stage is overall very asymmetrical. At least the Bulbar doesn't show up. Even though it would honestly be kind of fun to play an actual mat with the Bulbar there. Oh well. The stage is not really optimal to say the least. Smashville! Starterville is here! Finally! Yeah, this stage will probably be legal until the end of time. The stage is as plain as plain can be. Although I do have to say I really miss the platform moving. It added a lot more action to the stage, but I don't think it being still is a bad thing either. It does allow for more consistent follow-ups, and the platform can't be used for camping like it used to. So yeah, it's probably for the better. Though I will miss the moving platform. New Pork City! <laughs> no. Summit! This stage is just wrong on many levels. Despite having hazards off, it still has the hazards while transitioning. And the floor has ice physics, which is just... Why? If that wasn't enough, the slanted ice part here makes for a really good camping spot. And aside from that, historical camping is really easy on this stage as well. Sky World! Not exactly the best stage. There is ceilings all over the place. Circle camping is also not impossible here, even though the stage is not super huge. The stage is also very uneven and feels very claustrophobic to play on. With hazards on, it's kind of fun to play on because of how chaotic it is, but it has no place in a serious tournament. Shadow Moses Island. The Holy Grail of Wall Stages. The entire left and right side blast stones are completely covered by walls. And with hazards off, the walls are not destructible, meaning the only way to KO your opponent is by launching them up. Needless to say, that causes some problems. Luigi's Mansion. Yet again, we have some ceilings to worry about. But aside from that, I honestly think this could have been a pretty interesting stage. Had the lower platform been completely intangible, I would not have been opposed to trying to play on it. But as it stands, the ceilings do screw things up too much. Pirate ship! Aw oh yeah, pirate ship! This has to be one of the best casual stages in all of Smash. I loved playing on this stage back in Brawl. They must have realized how great it was since they added it as DLC for Smash 4. For competitively, there are a lot of red flags here though. Water is not exactly the best mechanic. Also, despite hazards being off, the front of the ship will still hurt you and insta-kill you. The layout on the boat is also slanted, so, you know, I don't think we'll be seeing this in any tournaments anytime soon. But a man can dream. Spear Pillar. This stage just pretty much devolves into reckless pit fighting in the under section of the stage because there is so much of the ceiling. The only way you're getting anywhere is if you toss your opponent out of the pit and then edge guard them. But at that point, they also have the option of recovering high and landing on the top section. Then they can just make their way back to the pit. Not exactly optimal. 75M. Yeah, no, this stage is not good. There's like 5 million ledges, platforms everywhere, and the stage is pretty huge, all things considered. 
When playing on it, you'll probably end up doing most of your fighting on the top platform, where there is both a walk-off and a very low ceiling. I did discover this tech for Hero while playing on it. You can instantly get onto a platform by grabbing one of these ledges. Isn't that just so exciting? Anyways, moving on. Mario Bros. Punctuation. This is certainly a wacky one. It's like it's made exclusively to be the least playable competitive stage ever. The stage has ceilings all over the place, and walk-offs on every side. Now if that wasn't enough, these walk-offs are a little weird, in the sense that you can run through them and appear on the other side of the stage. However, if you get hit into them, you die. This makes the stage very easy to camp on, since you can just sit on one side of the stage and run in circles indefinitely. It's a super cheesy stage, and uh, not legal. Hanenbo! I have this strange affection for Hanbo, maybe because it's just so weird compared to the other stages. I remember playing a lot on this stage back in Brawl and being very confused as to what was happening, but I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Layout-wise, it's not exactly the most exciting thing in the world. It's an even train makes it an instant ban, and this leaf on the left side is a pretty good camping position. Oddly enough, the blue water on the bottom is not actually water, you just kind of fall through it, which is kind of weird. Even though I have some memories with this stage, I would never want to see it legal. It's kinda janky. Anyways, I think that is going to do it for now. We're about halfway through, and this video is already pretty long, but make sure to look out for part 2 coming later. If you agree or disagree with any of my assessments, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I'm always open for feedback. Also, I recently made a Discord server, so if you're interested in what I do and want to learn more about Smash, there will be a link to it in the description. Either way, thank you for watching and stay tuned for part 2.